Blessings, everyone. Okay, here. Uh, I'm still talking about the sign of Jonah. All right, so I'm just going to get started here. Now, this picture of Jesus on the rooftop with the angel in black behind him. This was taken around 2012, between, yeah, it was about 2012, I believe I, uh, I uploaded 2015. Now, if you go to my first video, this is it. This is the picture that you will see of Jesus. And here, I believe it says 2016, but really, I believe it was earlier than that when I started. But I'm not going to, it's not really irrelevant here other than to say that it was right around where everything was exploding. We had the Mandela effect. We had, I, my, myself personally, I was just learning how to use the computer. I was looking into things that, you know, um, that were just mouth dropping, just stick, you know, sitting there right with in awe, you know, with everything that was being shown to us, um, right there at your fingertips. And it was a very exciting time. It, it truly was. It was an exciting time. And I would have to say 99% of the time, 99% of what it was that I was seeing there on YouTube at that time was nothing but confirmation, confirmation, confirmation. It was unreal. You know, it was right there. Confirmation. Validation. So... There was a lot going on, like I said, and people were receiving, they were receiving their visions, their dreams, you know, and they were awakening to the name, his name, Jesus. And being in the last days was louder than ever, than I've ever heard it, that we were in the last days. So there was a lot of channels, a lot of, you know, channels went up. Everybody was pretty much like talking. The, the, the comment sections were just, you know, alive, communicating. It was like a highway of voices, you know. But now, <laughs> a little different, but there was a channel that, uh, that hooked me. Just as Jonathan Kleck would, would have hooked me if it had not been for Soap Ministry, hearing him and pointing back to the garden. Now, even with Jonathan Kleck, myself, you can hear a lot of similarities in what we're talking about. But there are differences. And we both go back to the garden. You know? And it was this is the same thing that happened with this woman. But I didn't, I didn't have anything. I was just, I was opened up. I was, I was listening and this person was talking with her about her relationship with Jesus. And it was very, very similar to my relationship with him. And I knew it was possible because I had one. So I was starting to, to listen and I found that, you know, she was talking to him on a daily basis and I started to to look at the differences and the similarities of what was going on here and what she was talking about concerning the relationship. And in doing this, it was like um, I had to, qu I questioned everything, everything about me, everything that I have learned, everything I saw when I was young, um, what I was taught, everything. I, I questioned everything. And that's when it happened. I mean, I wasn't there for a very long time but long enough for the damage. And that was just a split second of doubt to question my faith, my belief. And then I heard, why do you play with your salvation? And that just shook me when I heard it. I, what, how am I playing with my salvation? Well, that was it for me. Now I was really scared. And uh, so again, I, I I guess I was still questioning. I guess, you know, because I was thinking that maybe I had done something wrong. You know, maybe there was something that I was supposed to have said but didn't say. 
And so I was thinking about everything in my, you know, everything. And I was falling and I was, I was falling so hard and so fast. One day I'm laying there and I mean, I can't even lift my head up off my pillow. And I'm laying there and I'm asking questions, you know. And then I heard Jesus from behind and in my ear say, do you remember when I told you you had a father in heaven? I knew this was Jesus. I knew his voice. I knew I was in trouble. And I said, yes. But that's all I could say and how I, and, and to respond. Now, it's important that you understand also with me and the relationship that I have with Jesus is when he does come to me or he speaks in my ear, it is not of a feeling of holiness or a great white light or, you know, there's nothing spectacular about it. The only amazing thing is, is his voice. It's his voice. There's no smell. There's no shaking of the body. You know, there's no light. There's no, oh, holier than thou. There's none of that. It's his voice. So I, I was still like, you know, I was laying there and, I think it was a couple of days later, I heard, repeat after me. So I did. And he put your hand in the hand. And I said, put your hand in the hand. And then he said, put your hand in the hand of the man that steals the waters. And it was right there that I knew that this was a song from my youth. And there was a phrase, there was a verse in that song that I never forgot. And it was take a look at yourself so that you could look at others differently. And I lived in that. For whenever I saw someone who was more unfortunate than I was in this in the place that, I, that I'm sitting in today, I can always look at them and say, that could be me at any given time, at any moment. I see myself in him. So then, again, a couple of days later, I heard, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. And I was still crying because I couldn't understand how I was playing with that, that I could lose my salvation. And I prayed hard. And this is what was given to me. Jonah. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compass me about. All my billows and thy waves pass me pass over me. Then I said, I, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy place, holy temple. The waters compass me about, even to, my, to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. And here was my answer. 
They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto, unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. When I first took this picture and I opened it up and saw it, I had I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know who to show it to. I would go in front of the churches and wait for people to come out of the churches so that I would be able to show someone And then that's, I believe, that's when I started, I picked up my phone and I started taping. And this was the first video. So I went back to listen to the first video to see how I got through that because I didn't know what to say. I, I really did not know what to say about this other than to say, this was a sign. So I went back to the video and it was about repentance. What I did is I just started to explain the pit to the picture to everybody and how it came about. And then I just heard myself talk about repentance. And this is where we are today in Nibia. Nibia that this is in our this is the last generation. This is the judge, judgment here. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Niveites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Okay, and so now what's happened with me here is that I was brought back to Nivea through a brother, so ministry slash weight, W-A-I-T, and I thank you for this, for being right where you were supposed to be to bring this information out because it pushed me farther and, and I, I was able to move, just, just, we'll put it that way, I was able to move forward. And so when I looked at this, I started to see that Nivea was all about also discernment and how Jonah was so upset when he when when he talks about the gourd and the worm I believe that the gourd could represent Nivea at this point because his anger is towards them yet when God talks to him about his anger you know he says why are you so angry because I mean you, you've done nothing to be a part of you know you've done nothing it is not yours yet you are angry why why are these things, you know, stirring you up? Why? Because here, when you have emotion, okay, it is like a, it's it what binds you, you know, because you can't think straight. Your, your decision-making is off. Your discernment is off. Your judgment is off. Because whatever it is that you're feeling is being justified the lust of that emotion. Okay, so here we have Jonah, who's very angry. So here God says, and should I not spare Nivea, that great city wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle. discernment, discerning. I want to show you something here. All right. This was something I had put in a way. It was in my history and I 
pulled it out when I saw this video that Soap Ministry slash Wait, W-A-I-T, had sent me. And I was really, I, I guess I was kind of upset because, you know, here, I, the picture that I just showed you with Jesus on the rooftop gets zero, you know, very low numbers. And so he sends me a video of this this other false prophet, false teacher, who, who likes to uh, set dates, I guess. And he um, throws up a picture that goes viral, and it's Jesus in the clouds, right? He's in the clouds. And it's like, what? So I remembered this, and I just wanted to show it to you and share it here. Okay. Now, here, I want you to pay attention to what's on the balcony. Here we have Godzilla in Pakistan, okay? This is a sandstorm that's happening. Again, could be harp. Right? We all know about harp. So, watch the balcony here. There's Godzilla. And then here we have the, the activity. Bang. Okay. So here we have There's actually people on the balcony over here who cannot see what's going on here, obviously. So, and then they, they all of a sudden, while this is still going on, they end up uh, disappearing. They don't, they don't watch the whole show for whatever reason. So here we go. Okay. So okay. Now this is the picture that goes viral. Yucatan, Mexico, okay? The cloud is the shape of Christ went viral. Went viral. All right. Looks a little bit like Godzilla in Pakistan. when we're discerning this one here doesn't even compare sad and you need to remember too that this picture here was not taken because I saw him you know on on the rooftop on top of this stone no I didn't see anything. I just snapped the picture. It was only after did I see him. Whereas I believe, I'm not sure how this worked out with this guy here. Did he see Jesus in the cloud first and snap the picture? Or did he snap the picture and then see him through the picture? Okay, so you see Nivea, Nivea here, Nivena, I can't pronounce it right, but right, so here, this is the witchcraft, this is the sorcery, this is the magic, this is their devices being used. This is Nineveh, right? Can't say you were you weren't warned. Discernment. <laughs> this really tickles. I just found this. Okay, so I'm just going to play it.
it just follows right along with what I've been saying here. Folks, I just this is I Spy. Wanted to make you aware of since we're on exposing chills and trolls and their tactics that deceive the elderly because the elderly do not know how to use the internet. And most of these people have an elderly following, sadly, where they collect money from the elderly for producing nonsense. So, uh, it goes far beyond just changing a YouTube comment. As you can see, I just went to Google, I typed in Twitter, and I'm going to totally deface this. Like I said, you right click on the text that you highlighted, you go into inspect, and as you can see, I can double click on the text that I highlighted and change it to something like this. Get to hit enter once you're done typing and as you see like magic before your eyes Ta-da! <laughs> isn't that special but hey it goes way beyond that i mean you could change titles you could deface a whole website if you have the time to do it i mean i mean seriously you can make the website say whatever you want post it so other people share your information and then your channel gets terminated for posting misinformation yeah so what, what we're gonna do we're gonna go to nasa you know i used to love nasa i want i wanted to travel to the stars when i was a little boy but anyways here we go we're gonna take this title and wait wait totally gonna have to face this like Mr. Quest does on a daily basis to innocent people. And uh, here we are, like I said, once you're done highlighting the comment, you right click on it, you go down to inspect, and the inspect box element will open, and you find it, and you double click on the text that you highlighted, and you type in whatever you want. So your fans can actually believe what you're saying. And voila. Isn't that special how these people work? And this has been happening since, I don't know, 2013 was the first time I caught it. And, you know, that was the whole, that was the whole mountain collapsing on top of my friggin' channel because I actually exposed it. Nonsense, isn't that correct there, Mr. Quest? Yeah. 